The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Alan Blumkin on the Comfortably Zone Radio Network. I'm here for another session of uh, Pittsburgh Sports with uh, my co-host, David Finoli. And today we're going to be talking about the state of the uh, 2018 Pittsburgh Pirates. Welcome, David. Hey, Al. How you doing, buddy? Okay. You know, I don't get uh, most of the games on TV. I follow them when I can on the iPad. So I'm going to let, give you the uh, privilege of starting off because, uh, you know, you can discuss what you know, the great start that they had and what happened this past weekend. Well, they, they got off. Everybody was on a hot streak early on. Um, I personally think this is this is a better team than they had last year, so I am still claiming 80 to 82 wins by the end of the year. But um, – Everybody got off to a hot start. They they rolled out the uh, eight two. They were scoring five six, uh, averaging five six runs a game, um, and then Josh Harrison got hurt. Um, now, in my mind, whereas Josh Harrison is an important piece, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, we're not talking all star quality or not all star, but uh, Hall of Fame quality here. Um, I just personally think everybody went into uh, a bit of a cold spell. I think um, uh, the leadoff uh, men, um, and starting with Harrison, who was slumping as as uh, um, the season was going on and, and as he got hurt, and, um, you know, certainly uh, Frazier uh, and Rodriguez have not been off to stellar starts either. I think the biggest thing that hurts um, in setting up Starling Marte is everybody raved about Gregory Polanco's start. Well, they were still raving when he was hitting 220. I personally thought he had two or three really good games and then just nosedive since. Um, and having him at the at the two hole at this point um, in, in his tremendous slump, I think, is hurting everything else. Um, like anything else, it's a long season. I, I don't think uh, um, obviously they're going to be in an offensive slump like this. I'm not the, a, a guy who thinks Josh Harrison is the straw that stirs the drink, so to speak. And on the positive end, uh, when you look at the start Trevor Williams has gotten off to and, and Jamison Tyon and how uh, uh, Kuehl has pitched down the stretch, and basically Nova's pitching a little better than you thought, I think the starting pitching has, has exceeded the expectation at this point. Um Except for the other day, uh, Vasquez and Felice have, have uh, done phenomenal, and Santana has pitched decently as of late. But you you still have a bullpen that's that's hurting. You. There's there's no ifs ands or buts. But um, I I think the the crux of the, the last few days has just been plain and simple: the team's in a slump. You know, from my perspective, uh, one of the problems with Harrison getting hurt is that you turn the bench players into starters and the bench gets uh, gets stretched and they had to bring up Morov, who uh, has been found wanting uh, a couple of times already. And uh, um, that's true. But, I mean, that's that's every team is going to have to go through this at one point in time. And, and the one advantage this year over last year is um, last year's bench uh, was, was awful, yeah one of the worst benches you've seen. I mean, you have Jaso, um, Chris Stewart was your main backup catcher. Moro, in his rookie year, as you mentioned, was was uh, pretty bad. Jordan Luplo, uh, Nagopi, uh, Hansen, Goslin. I mean, um, it was just a string of people uh, that had no business being on a major league roster. Uh, poor, uh, uh, just, just a poor, poor bench. So when injuries happened last year, you were forced into – into throwing a JSO into into the outfield, um, a lot of that on on the GM for not um, looking at the outfield depth uh, last year as he did this year. But um, um, you know, I have do you, think they're in a better better position to survive such things this year. Have they uh, handled the uh, fundamentals better? Have they handled the uh, uh, you know uh, the base running and the fielding, uh, or is that still a problem? Well, and this this is. This is the problem with how they set up the team. No, the fielding, um, for the most part, there there have been some some um, uh, 
decent play out there, but for the most part, it's been just as abominable as it's uh, it's been years before. Moran has, for the most part, uh, uh, played uh, hit decent for the year, but um, is in a little slump himself, but not the best of uh, third basemen. Um, Jordy Mercer, I've never been a fan of defensively. I know that, yeah. Hmm. Josh Bell has improved. Uh, Cervelli has improved a little. Dickerson is what he is. I mean, he's... He's played a little better defensively than, than we expected, but, you know, he's still not uh, gold glove quality. And Polanco, you just don't get it with him. I, I, I guess he's just not a good defensive player. Um, you know, many times guys have taken extra bases when he's gotten to a ball at the wall and just kind of uh, pop it in uh, rather than, you know, take the ball and try to hurry it up in. So that is in, 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 instincts seem to be bad. Oh, exactly, and and I don't know that they're getting better. I mean, his chance to be a successful major leaguer is going to be if he hits consistently. And I mean, 197 at this point, which you know you're you're looking at about a 130 start since the first uh, uh, first series. So that's that's not going to get it done. Um, he may, yeah, maybe one. He may be one of these players that they said have a million dollars worth of talent and a 10 cent head. Well, that's not far off. I mean, you might, you might be right about that because he, he certainly, you know, when it comes to baseball intelligence, certainly doesn't look the part out there. Um, on the other end, Josh Bell's going to hit with power. He's He's been decent this year, but he'll he'll hit with some more power. I think um, Dickerson is in a bit of a slump, but still having a nice year. And he, he'll get some power with him. He only has one homer. Um, well, one problem they have is outside of uh, – you know, Cincinnati, who actually won a game last night, but is still on uh, a 1962 Mets pace. That division is, uh, you know, pretty competitive. Oh, uh, for sure. I mean, um, the Brewers have, have kind of bucked uh, um, small market tradition. They spent a lot of money this year. Um, the Cardinals, the Cardinals are who the Pirates need to look to emulate. Um, uh, yes, they spend money. Yes, they find ways to keep their star. But what makes the cardinal tick is is that farm system um always seemingly when somebody goes down there's somebody that they can plug in somebody ready it's it's it is like the perfect farm system it is how a farm system is supposed to work um and they're they're uh, getting some uh, they had a slow start but they're getting some fire now the cubs are um have struggled a little early on but you know at the end of the season they're they're going to be at the top of the well the thing with the cubs is uh yeah, I posted on uh, the Facebook uh, right after the World Series ended that uh, somebody, some team was going to uh, substantially overpay you, Darvish. And it turned out to be yeah. the Cubs. It and, turned out to uh, be the This is after, after his uh, horrible World Series uh, last year. And uh, he's been horrible for the Cubs so far. And, uh, you know, I put down that, that I guess uh, Theo uh, Epstein and the company are not such geniuses after all. Yeah, no, they. I mean, everybody everybody makes some mistakes. The thing about the uh, the Cubs and the Red Sox and the Yankees, uh, the Yankees who have struggled a little bit early on, now starting to come around a little bit. Um, oh, I, they can make mistakes, and, and and they can they can afford to make them because they they just keep spending money to have uh, have uh, backup for for the mistakes. Yeah, well, also so the weather has finally uh, started to turn and. Uh, in the, in the northeast and the midwest. So, I mean, uh, one of the things I, theories I had about Mike Stanton, or, sorry, John, John Carlos Stanton, was that he wasn't used to playing in cold weather. No, I'm, I'm sure that was. And there's that probably was. a lot of them, especially, uh, you know, the uh, players uh, from the uh, Car- Caribbean countries uh, basically are not, you know, are not comfortable playing when it's uh, 30 degrees with 20-mile-an-hour 20, 20 winds. And if you, if you look at the, the way uh, Marte and Polanco were bundled, I would think that's that's probably a fair assessment. Um, and, and that has been a, a big problem in uh, in baseball early on the the insistence on starting the uh, the games much earlier and not doing the smart thing and, and scheduling them in the Midwest and or, I'm sorry the West and South. Um, it, it's been horrendous here. People are you know. Looking at the pirate, one night I was at the Altoona opener, their double A team, and a friend of mine who's a cameraman on uh, 
uh, for uh, AT&T Sports, who does the Pirate Games, sent me a picture uh, of who was at the Pirate Game that night. There were more people in the Altoona stands. But I think a lot of that was just um, to couple with the anger at uh, um, at, at Nutting is the weather was just so got awful uncomfortable. And at a yeah, baseball game, there, I mean, that, uh, I found uh, I had problems even watching it on television. Oh, it was so, Colorado. Uh, but, but what happened in 1982 was uh, you know, like this, uh, the first week or two of that season. And uh, uh, so the next year, you know, there were you know, tons of games that were uh, postponed cause of, because of weather. 1983, yeah. they uh, opened in, you know, in the south and in the west. And nothing happened in 1983 in the north and the mid- northeast and the midwest. So they went back in 84. They went back to the old way. Which, which again, um, you know, a, a lot of it is just depending on just bad luck. I mean, it was just bad luck this year also with, with the way the weather has. I mean, um, Colorado series, uh, <laughs> the, the snow squirrel, squalls were pretty intense at times uh, at PNC Park. And, and the problem with going to PNC Park, you're right off the river without anything really blocking it. So without anybody in the stadium, and I, I've been there uh, during times where there have been a couple thousand in there and it's been a cold night, it's it's pretty brutal. I mean, it's it's not meant for watching a live game. So no, actually, uh, the, the Yankees had one game that was played in, uh, in uh, you know, that, that, that kind of weather with uh, uh, wind and very low temperatures and some precipitation with 14 innings. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> yeah, this is. But yeah, the, the, also the problem with the scheduling is that unless you're playing in the division, it's very hard to make up these games. If they get postponed. Absolutely, especially if you're playing uh, uh, an American League uh, team. If you're in the National League. Yeah, even even yeah. The, they played the Rockies. Those you know that weather because uh, uh, Colorado was a one trip in because they're not in the uh, you know they're not in the same division. Right, right. So, a couple of years ago, the Pirates had to go out in the middle of a homestand, they had to go out to Denver to play a game, to make up a game in Denver, in the middle of a homestand, play a game there where it got clobbered, and then come back to finish the homestand. Yeah, it was horrible. I remember it, that. It's that very, very difficult to make up these. You know, so, uh, for example, the Mets school rained out in Atlanta Sunday. I told people, I said, that's, that's a division game. It's easy to make up at this stage. Absolutely, and and I agree with that. But I I think um, I, I I do think right now people are, are far overreacting to the last uh, the last week. There are just going to be stretches like this. There was stretches in 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 seventy one where you know you looked like you were you were starting to blow the pennant a little in in April and uh, or yeah. in August. I mean, it just happens to the good teams, um, and. You know, they're just going to be a lot up and down with this. I, I like the way the team is situated versus last year. Love the way uh, Diaz is playing, um, hitting over 400, hitting with some pop in his bat. Um, OPS is at 1.1, which is which is incredible. Um, I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Gary Cole was comfortable at being designated as an ace. You know, down in Houston, he lost two to nothing last night. Uh, no. He's one of a few. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, he may be one of those pitchers that uh, can't handle the, pre- the pressure of being a number one. Right. Which, which is conceivable. But, again, you know, he's been on streaks like this with um, Pittsburgh before, too. It's, yeah. It's just, uh, um, you know. We had a great season, it, though, you know, when he went 19-6, and six, but apparently he couldn't uh, – he couldn't, for whatever reason, follow up on that. And Italian has yeah. looked great outside of that uh, start uh, against the Philly Stars thing night where they clubbed him for five runs. But, uh, which I think that um, um, it, it's going to be more uh, – the the rule is he's going to be great this year. I, I, I love Tyon as a prospect. This is what we expected from him. Um you know, Do you think Glasnow will ever become a dependent, dependable major league pitcher, or he's just one of these guys well, that, uh, you know, I call uh, uh, quadruple A, that they're, they're too good for triple A and not good enough for the majors? Let's just hope he, he ends up coming around like Randy Johnson did. 
Um, Randy Johnson, I don't believe, was as bad as Glasnow has been, but it it took a while for a tall pitcher like Glasnow is to uh, for Johnson to to come into what he was. So he's when he's on, and I saw this in his first relief appearance of the year. Just his, his nasty stuff was just on, just you know, biting pitches, hitting the corners. Um, but again, he's he's just not consistent, and he he seems to panic a little if if he's not getting the calls. Um, so hopefully oh. he he turns. Uh, it, it's tough. Yeah, um, Trevor Williams also pitched very well so far. Uh, oh, yeah. I saw Nova against the Cubs. They televised the MLB televised two uh, uh, two of the games in the Cubs series that they won. Yeah. And uh, Nova looked, uh, you know, he looked pretty decent because, uh, 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 you know, when he was here, he was uh, pitching for the Yankees. He was uh, uh, not consistent most of the time. Well, but, he, uh, he, has pitched, he had one bad outing, but he is yeah. a nice pitcher. And Brock has I mean, been he, decent. And uh, yeah. uh, cool, cool. 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 I've not seen enough. Um, but, yeah, and Kuhl has actually pitched well lately. Um, he struggled early on. I, I've, um, I, I, he was a little rocky against the Rockies, uh, um, but uh, other than that, I, I think he's pitched decently down the stretch. He's he's a good number four guy. Um, and Vasquez the other, has been very good. Yeah, Vasquez has been very good since that opener. Yeah, and Feliz has been like, lights out until uh, the other day in Philadelphia, but. I mean, he's had two bad outings, but the rest have been, like, spectacular. Well, the thing um, is, is that, uh, you know, I've I, I stressed this point to uh, several friends of mine, that if you limit uh, the starters to whatever, you can't expect these relievers to be on every day. No. no which, you, is, you which is what the, the mentality is. Yeah, the, Mets for, had, for, uh, the Mets had a game Saturday against Atlanta where Jacob DeGrom threw 97 pitches, yeah. Seven innings, he struck out ten, gave up no runs. They pulled him out, and they, the relievers, who have been pretty good, they gave up two in the eighth and two in the ninth to lose the game. Yeah. So you, you yeah. can't really depend that these guys are going to have it every night. That's going to happen. Usually if you get a pitcher going seven innings, you're you're in pretty good shape. Um, the problem with the Pirates early on um, was they, they weren't getting past the fifth inning. And... and they're not deep enough that they can survive that night in and night out. Um, and Contos is, a, to me, he's a, he's a solid uh, six-inning guy. Um, having him as your eighth-inning guy is probably not where I would have him. At, at yeah, me, to me neither. Yeah, but he's, he's a good pitcher. I'm glad they have him on the team. But, um, that, you know, he, that opening game was on TV here because it, it was postponed the day. And MLB right. had nothing to televise it. That's to move the – the, 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 the opener, and, and that was one of, the, one of the most insane games I've ever seen. Well, with a, well here's a Lee's blew a four run lead, then uh, oh, Asquez yeah. blew a four run, run lead, and then I had turned the game off, assuming they had lost in the 10th inning. A friend of mine right. pulls me up and said, You're watching the game? It's the 13th inning. I said, What? Oh, yeah. So they yeah, lost yeah, the game in the 10th inning. What kind of 13th inning? So I went to the iPad and boom, it was in the 13th inning, and then uh, I put it back on to see them win the game. But uh, uh, no, I, mean, I, I, was, <laughs> I was the same way. I, I, I re- and I realized that the only because this happened in a f- football game with the uh, Falcons and the Lions uh, last year, where something was uh, a call was overturned. So I said there had to be an overturned call. You know, I assumed that once the Pirates kept running a, ran off the field and Detroit was going crazy that. Uh, that game had ended. So I did this. I did the same thing. Turned it off. I was taking my wife out to dinner. It wasn't till um, the top of the thirteenth when I looked at the bar of the restaurant we were at and and thought they were just replaying the game. And I looked again and saw the thirteenth inning. I had no idea. I was mad in hell for for a good forty five minutes until <laughs> I, I I looked up there and and found out that the game wasn't over. Um, but. It's, it's. I mean, you got three games against Detroit. You win two of them. Uh, you, you, you have the Cardinals coming in on for the for the weekend, which is going to be a nice test. Yeah, yeah, which is a nice test. And again, you know, hopefully you can pull out two there. But um, one of the things I, I don't know if you read this article, um, Buster Olney um, um, brought up that there was uh, 
suggested in some tweets that Cole's forcing fastball is jumping significant because they believe he might be using pine tar. I don't know that that he is or that it's factual, but the article came out yesterday, and then Trevor Bauer, who was a teammate of his um, at UCLA, and I guess they didn't like it, didn't mention his name, but basically insinuated that he's pitching clean if he did what others do. Um, you know, you could increase uh, the RPM on on your uh, four seam incredibly, which which apparently is um, they they said is the oftentimes the difference between um, you know a spectacular pitcher and, a, and an average pitcher. Um, but that's going to be an interesting thing. I'd like to see how that plays out. Of course, yesterday was the only time I I had seen that come up. But if that's a if that's a situation, that certainly would I haven't heard that. That's the first I've heard of this. Yeah, it, it came out yesterday, Buster Olney on uh, on ESPN. Um, if you kind of type that in, uh, Pine Tar Buster Olney. Um, okay, it's probably cheaper than uh, taking steroids. <laughs> basically, they, they they what they're saying is this has a, a much better effect on on the game than steroids have, um, because uh, uh, this is this is can make a pitcher go from an average pitcher to a dominant one. So. Um, that's going to be interesting to see if that plays out a little bit. Um, on the other end, I mean, uh, uh, Kutch, I, I feel bad for him, but he certainly is, is struggling mightily in, in San Francisco. Um, so I, I'm, I, I'm certainly not sure that keeping him here would have been with Dickerson hitting 303 would have, would have made this team, uh, improve any. Um, and, uh, the, the kid, unfortunately, the kid, uh, main kid they got for him in, uh, Altoona. Um, broke his hand, so he's going to be out for a while. Um, but um, you, you, you look down. One thing, I, I looked down in the minors, and I was a little irritated that they kept 13 pitchers. I understand the philosophy, but you got Jose Osuna, who just ripped the ball in um, in spring training. And right now he is um, um, hitting the ball uh, incredibly at Indianapolis. He has a 333 average, 937 OPS. Um, so here's a kid I'd like to see them, especially if they're struggling, you know, let's get him up here on the bench and, um, you know, with, if you're going to hit 333, I, I, I don't mind his struggles in the outfield as much with that. When you're Jaso hitting 200 and you're struggling in the outfield, it just makes no, no sense to be there. Well, there were times last year that I will, uh, hit Jaso clean up, which was ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so, but I mean, he's, you know, he'd be a nice guy to come off the bench, uh, a nice guy to pinch hit. Um, Meadows has hit better than he's been. He's just not hitting with power yet, which to me is a little concerning. Um, he's hitting in the 290s consistently, but um, his OPS hasn't risen above uh, 746, which, um, which is a little concerning to me. But um, um, those are basically was- right. Your, your two options down there. Moroff was off to a good start, but he only played eight games. So I'm not quite sure um, what you're going to get out of him up here. Had a nice nice couple games up in the major so far, so hopefully he, he's turned things around. Um, good part for, for down there is if any pitching issues. Nick Kingham has finally returned from Tommy John surgery um, late last year, but he's finally pitching the way he did before the surgery. He's had just four spectacular starts. His whip is under one. Um, ERA is, is around 1.5. Um, so, I mean, that'd be a nice thing if Nick King can continue that pace because um, if you get pitching injuries, all of a sudden here's a nice option to throw in. Yeah. It, so if that now is struggling, you're not forced to make that call. Well, they uh, sent out a couple of pitchers. Who, well, one in particular was Damon Scapesing right now who started the season with them and was racked up a couple of times. And they uh, shipped him out, and then they shipped a couple of others. And uh, uh, I think Sugar was finally uh, cleared to, uh, you know, to, to, to pitch. Yeah, he's he's pitched a, f- a few times down there so far. I'm, I'm not sure he's been effective yet, but it's going to take a, a little bit of time before he comes up. Um, you're right. You made the call on Josh Smoker at our. At oh, our Smoker. Team. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh God. He's man. been. He, he, he's awful with the Mets last year. I don't even know why they even looked at him. Oh yeah. And the guy you were talking was uh, Neveraskis, who um, 
to me, he, he's like a Caminero. He, he, he can hit the upper 90s. Um, but has no pitches, idea where it's but, going, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he has no idea where it's going, and there's, there's, but there's no movement on it either, and he has no other pitch yeah. to follow up. So, you know, you, you may miss once or twice at it, but you, you're able to time it because it's coming straight in. Um, so he, he needs to desperately learn another pitch. Um, Glass now has he's been so back and forth. Um, his his walks have they're bad. Don't get me wrong, they're they're bad. I think he's averaging six per nine innings, but um, you know they're they're not what they were last year. So I guess in a weird way, there's a little a little improvement there. The strikeouts are there, but um, it just seems like when he's not hitting the corners, he he just gets a little. Um, a little crazy and, and starts trying to pinpoint it down the middle. Um, although he's really only had one very poor performance, uh, to be honest, but um, you just, he's a guy you just, I just looking for. And I, I really hope he's a good kid and he has a lot of good stuff. So he can be a different changer if he can find it. And the other kid they got from the giants in McCutcheon has come up and he's quietly had a, uh, although only four innings, he's had a nice start um, to the season, seven strikeouts in four innings, um, you know, ho- hopefully, maybe he's the guy you you put in the. If you're not ready for Feliz yet, you put him into the uh, into the. Yeah, I, I I told people uh, on Pirate Chat. I put one. Uh, I saw that they had signed Smoker. I said this guy's awful. The last left-hander that they had gotten from the bats prior to Smoker was John Neese, who they traded yeah. Neil Walker for, and we all know how that, how that one worked out. Yeah, Neese and, 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 absolutely. And he's couldn't be beat anybody here. He's also one of these pitchers who has an error made behind him. He goes to pieces. He went to pieces. But he's bounced yeah. around to a few teams. I think he's in the Yankee system now, but they'll never call him up. No, no, no. He, he, he won't call up. But, but it's, it's better to, I think it's better to give these younger ones a chance and to, to, to constantly pick up these retreads that flop somewhere else. And all of a sudden, you know, they flop somewhere else. And all of a sudden, they're going to come to the Pirates and, and be be good. Exactly, and and that's again another thing where um, J. Hap was was affordable. He was signable, um, and you chose to let him go. And he's he's not been lights out with Toronto, but he's been very good. I mean, oh yeah, he was hurt a good portion of last season, and he was a twenty game winner of the season before. Right, he's, he's been very. Good. I mean, his ERA has been in the mid threes, and in, in the American League, that's that's pretty good. I mean, I mean, they've, they've let Volquez go, and he, outside that, no whether he pitched. Uh, he hasn't been any uh, any ball fire either. I don't even know if he's anywhere this year. Um, yeah, I'm 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 not sure where he is, but um, but I mean, this this is the this was the thing. What what Neil Huntington did in the off season this year, I have no problem. Uh, I thought they, and I still will claim, I don't care what Garrett Cole is pitching at this point. I, I still think they got good value for him. Um, but I, I don't think they would, would have gotten, this, gotten the same uh, performance out of him as, as, as the Astros are because he's, he doesn't have to be the, the, the number one there. Absolutely not. I, I mm. totally agree with you on that. But I think we're, we, again, we're, yeah. uh, Huntington's group was in 2015 in that off season. Um, you had a chance to keep a core together. You, you had a chance to sign an affordable pitcher, which to me would have made all the difference. Uh, when you signed Vogel Song, you basically were saying, "Okay, we've won three years in a row, and that's it." That that was where people should have been furious. Um, oh, well, they did have him the first time, and they had uh, for a while. They had this pitcher, Van Bon Schotten. Yeah. And I called them the V men, and that was not exactly a compliment. Met met as a compliment. No, no. A vocal song he, I couldn't he, stand the first time around. Right. Yeah, and then was, and they brought him back. It was it was done. He wasn't the vocal song with the Giants. He was done. And then uh, Bensko, and um, you know, there's a prime example of another bonehead movie. Was he led the nation in home runs? But he could throw the ball in the upper 90s, so they decided to turn him into a pitcher. Yeah, I truly believe that they left him as um, I believe he was a first baseman. Had they left him there, he would have been a tremendous pick, uh, just a tremendous pick. And, and again, just another line. He throws the ball in the 90s. He, he didn't look like he had necessarily collegiate stats that would let you think he was going to be lights out up here. 
Um, so they, they, that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> I've gone through with a couple of threads on Facebook on pictures like Billy Pierce and Whitey Ford and Bobby Chance and Harvey Addicts. You know, the small left-handers who have pretty successful major league careers. These guys don't even get looked at anymore. They're yeah. too small. Yeah. All you need is the big guys that can throw, you know, up in the 90s, and it doesn't matter whether they have movement or they have control. You know, the, 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 they, they sign these guys, and it's just really, really, uh, everything is by the numbers right now, and it's, you know, it's very hard for an old-timer like me to, to uh, accept. I don't disagree with you. I, I think that's the fun part of uh, Trevor Williams being successful. Um, you know, here's a guy that's not going to blow you away with a 99 mile an hour fastball, but he he has been nothing last year. I thought he was a best overall pitcher for the Pirates, um, and the same this year if you look at it. Ty on uh, has yeah. certainly been phenomenal too. But I, I, Trevor Williams is just about every game he's coming here, and he's just been a uh, close to a dominant pitcher. I mean, you know, his his whip is at one one. I mean, he's given up only 19 hits in 29 innings. Um, you know he's not gonna he's not gonna strike out the uh, three batters an inning, but uh, on the on the other end he's a guy who just seems to know how to pitch. And you know I I think Brault's kind of that same that same mentality. Um, so it's it's nice to see guys like that succeeding on the team. Cause I agree with you. I think I mean greatest pitcher in the in the eighties and nineties was was uh, Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox was anything but a you by a yeah. But yeah, the thing is, I've never been uh, really impressed by a lot of strikeouts. I mean, I uh, one of the things when people and post that uh, you know Nolan Ryan is one of the all-time great pitchers, I, I don't want to start anything, so I just ignore it. I don't put a like on it. But I think he was, you know, was extremely overrated. But I don't, I don't because he, he he also walked uh, you know quite a few more than anybody else ever, and he lost more games than. Than any pitcher in the 20th century. So, I mean. Yeah, I mean, no, no people are a popular, popular guy. Yeah, people are mesmerized by strikeouts and no hitters. You know. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I, I think, uh, um, you know, pitching is, uh, actual pitching is a lost art. And, and, um, yeah, yeah, I, that's, 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 the Hall of Fame, but he's not in any way, shape, and form in the conversation of the top pitchers in the history of the game. Yeah. If, Yesterday was the top the, uh, night. And that would have been the 97th birthday of Warren Spahn. So, uh, yeah. and the thing about Spahn was that he was able to transition from a fastball pitcher, such as it was back in his early years, to a to a real pitcher with a screwball and assortment of, uh, of pitches. Uh, he was able to do that transition without any loss of effectiveness. Oh yeah. No, it's without a doubt. I mean, which to me is, uh, you know, is the key to the, the fact that he was, uh, he was so, he was so terrific. He was able to pitch in, into his uh, early forties. But uh, uh, looking at you, right on the button with Ryan, uh, um, and if you look at what he has there, he almost has uh, uh, one walk every two strikeouts. Uh, oh yeah, and that's that's not real good. No, um, you know that's that's. Uh, that's certainly not real good, but um, um, but I agree with you. I would, you know, I, I, when Doug Drabick was here, and certainly having his uh, his best years in in uh, a major league uniform, he was doing it with basically that kind of pitcher. Yeah. Oh yeah. But the Pirates, so, uh, outside of maybe Bob Veal, the Pirates have never really had the uh, high strikeout pitchers. No, no, they really haven't. Um. Because the key to the night, one of the keys to the pitching staff in 1960 was they were very stingy with bases on balls. Right. I mean that's that's the thing, and that's what I, I think Searage really tries to do with this this uh, team here. He wants he wants them to pitch the contact, um, and he he doesn't want to he doesn't want to put men on base. I mean that's that's a key. I mean I'm. I'm looking at Ryan's whip here. It's one point one point two five. I mean, again, you know, you make a, good, a very valid point there. He has a five twenty six uh, winning percentage. Yeah, he's a, he's a good pick, deserving of the Hall of Fame, but more out of yeah. length of career. And he also and, pitched to the level of the teams he was on. He didn't make yeah. any any team he was on appreciably better. 
No, no, no that's still conduct. I, I agree with you. And there's when, a, when Billy and I, yeah, there's a statistical we, wins against team. We compare the pitcher's winning percentage against the team's winning that. percentage. Walter Johnson, yeah. the all-time best. Uh, Tom okay. Seaver, I think, was second when I looked at this a number of years ago. And even Whitey Ford was better than the Yankee teams that he pitched for, which is saying right. a lot. But Ryan, Ryan, uh, you know, uh, he, 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 he never came close to winning a Cy Young Award. Yeah. And I just think that he, you know, I think, but I, I don't want to start anything on Facebook. So I just ignore, I ignore these people who post this together, that he was so, so great. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight years in the top ten, but that's out of twenty-seven years pitched. Yeah, you know? yeah. that's uh, he's in the Hall of Fame like Don Sutton's in the Hall of Fame. I know that, yeah, because it was accumulated. Yeah, that's that's why he's there. He's deservedly yeah. in, but he's. I agree with you. I, I would not put him in in uh, any way, shape, or form a list of my greatest yeah, pitchers. Uh, Cooperstown, I love accumulators. You know, yeah, any oh, yeah. any Murray got in there. Being the only player that had 500 home runs without having a season of more than 33, they love these people. You know, the, the, the people will fall off the table very quickly. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they they don't like them nearly as much as they do the people who hung around for pile up numbers because they hang around for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, and and I and I, um, I, I I go over this uh, with friends all the time. I, I Don Sutton's like one of my players I look at and and say this guy does not in any way, shape, and form belong in the Hall of Fame. Um, he got the magic number. He got the 300 wins. Right, but he did it without ever having more than one or two what I would consider Hall of Fame seasons. Yeah, well, just, you, know, just, just you, go, you go for the, the Craig Biggios that get 3,000 hits and hit 270, 280. You know, yeah. They do it because they're there forever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm with you, Al. Yeah, well, we can talk Hall of Fame all day, you know, from now until <laughs> the end of time. I want to ask you, uh, do you like Diaz as a catcher defensively? I love Diaz as a catcher. I didn't know why they brought back Stewart or um, um, had Stewart uh, doing most of the catching last year when he came back from injury. Um, I think Diaz has some pop in his bat that the other guys don't. Um, I, I know they, they claim about handling the pitching staff and the – it's framing, what have you. When I, when I see them out there, I don't seem to be. I, I don't. I don't really see guys uh, uh, pitching worse than what they do to Cervelli. But he's a guy with a better arm than Cervelli, and he um, he's a better hitter. He's just a better hitter. I, he looks like but, he can yeah. he can get some, some zip in that bat too because he when he gets a hold of the ball, he really uh, uh, rips it. Um, they, so yeah, I. They, I the uh, USA Weekly, a uh, couple of issues ago, uh, had all the all the, the uh, payrolls, all the salaries, and said that Savelli is the highest paid pirate right now. He is, and he's, and he's, he's on a five-year money. deal. So I imagine, you know, to justify what they're paying him, they're going to they're going to play him uh, more often. That's exactly what it is, and. I mean, so from all intents, it seems like Cervelli can be a good leader, and I'm sure that's part of it too. Um, and he's not a bad player. I mean, he's, he's had he does get hurt uh, frequently. Yeah. Well, we we always kind of chuckle when when uh, we noticed that when Diaz got a, a nasty foul ball off the ankle, he just kind of picked it up and threw it back. When when Cervelli gets hit, he seems to roll about 50 times. But uh, um, but he, he he is doing well this year. I mean, he's he's. You know, I, I can't really uh, uh, criticize uh, uh, Cervelli. They're in a bit of a slump right now, but he he's, looks like his defense is a lot more solid than it was a year ago. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but the Yankees played uh, Toronto four games over the weekend, and uh, Russell Martin is uh, hitting about a buck forty right now. I, I was on, on the way back from. Uh, um, I had a, a speaking event in Altoona, um, and on the way back, I turned on my serious radio and, and listened to that. And, yeah, it was the Toronto announcer just getting all over in that case. Um, so, um, yeah, he's, he's not uh, – there, there are some people pitching well for the Pirates, but I, I saw a thing, former Pirates, uh, um, in, in their hitting stats, and there are not a lot of former Pirates out there who are hitting well this year. 
Well, when they got Dickerson, they were they got rid of Daniel Hudson, which to me was worth the price. You know what? If, if they had just taken Daniel Hudson for nothing, that would have been great. But to get yeah, him, I know. It was a different by subtraction. And uh, yeah, uh, the Reds have uh, Jared Hughes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's again, I mean, he's pitching what he did here. He's you know, in yeah. a good year, he's, he, but he's not, he's not a lights-out kind of guy. Yeah. So hopefully I, I, they'll be able to get uh, get themselves straightened out. Uh, uh, they're, they're facing tonight. They're facing Jordan Zimmerman, who uh, has a 7.71 ERA and has looked very unimpressive uh, in, in every outing that he's uh, had this year so far. So hopefully they can uh, they can uh, get back on track tonight and win a few games. Well, well, they expecting rain in Pittsburgh uh, at all? We're supposed to get so. We're supposed yeah, to get soaked off, here tomorrow. Off, off and on all day. Um, so it's 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 going to be cool tonight. It's going to be in the 30s again um, by the evening. Um, but um, you know, it, it's a long season, and that's what I know. know yeah, been, read the same thing on Facebook. You know, uh, two weeks ago, everybody's oh, maybe this team can contend for a World Series and. You know, lately it's they are what we think they are, and and all like that. It's it's a long year. It's it's not like any other sport. It's not where a five game losing streak in in hockey and and football is going to define the season. Um, you know, we're we're what twenty twenty two games into a yeah, the twelve and ten right now, yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it I I expect much better things from from this. Now team. imagine yeah. a lot of the Pittsburgh people were. Uh, Imagine that. I know from uh, the focus basically on the hockey team right now. Which again, you know, if if you you want a team to root for, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's a team that. I mean, we have basically two stars on this team, and a lot of guys who have good pieces who who are giving you 110 percent every night, and and both our stars are Sid Crosby. Every game, he, he, he he's. Playing his butt off, he, he's he's the kind of star you want on a team. He never takes a night off. He makes the people around him better, and, and he's a great community guy. So this is this has just been a, a absolute joy to watch this team over the last three years. Because um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not a hockey fan by any means. I haven't really followed yeah. it since I was 16, but I, I have been watching some of the Penguins games. I downloaded the uh, NBC app. Oh, good. So I, uh, you know, so so I, uh, NBC Sports app. So I, I've been watching some of it, and uh, uh, one of the, I was complaining Sunday how the the the, 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 uh, the Philadelphia was forcing a seventh game. This is before the barrage. Yeah, that made it eight. And uh, uh, but uh, you know, because uh, I have a lot of from Pittsburgh friends, you and the, you know, a lot of the people on the, uh, you know, on Pitt, uh, Pirate Chat. I put that on right. as I'm rooting for the Penguins because of you people. We appreciate it. It, it was, it was. Uh, I mean, that's that's the kind of team this is. They find a way to win when it doesn't look like they should. And um, that performance by a kid named Jake Gensel in 31 playoff games, he has 19 goals. In 122 regular season games, he only has 35. So, I mean, here's a kid that, you know, out of nowhere, when when the games are at their most important, seems to find a way to score, and he scores four goals in a row to win the game. That sounds like a Billy Martin type. You know, exactly. Billy Martin, when he was playing, was a two fifty, two sixty hitter. When he got to the World Series, uh, he uh, turned it uh, up a hundred notches and became a superstar. And that's exactly what what this team has: is guys that that know when to when to turn it up and and. Um, it, as I said, it's win or lose against the Capitals. This has just been uh, uh, this team has been a joy to watch. Very, very proud of, uh, of what they've accomplished. I mean, hell, three years ago, they were within a month of breaking up. They were about to break up the team, and and all of a sudden, for years, we were told we had no minor league system whatsoever. And and Jimmy Rutherford comes in and brings these kids up, and who knew? Uh, in a it was it was a one month. Rebuilding process. A rebuilding process you usually figure two or three years. It took Jimmy Rutherford one month to take this team from a disappointment to a Stanley Cup champion, and, and they've been on a roll ever since. Well, the winter sports here, uh, the Knicks and Nets basketball games, didn't even win 30 games apiece. 
and the three hockey teams, the Rangers and Islanders, uh, didn't make it, and the Devils yeah. were wiped out by Tampa Bay in five games. So they're gone also. So uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, the Madison Square Garden with the Knicks and the Rangers are back to where they were in the early 60s, except uh, uh, if the circus was in town, they wouldn't have to uh, worry about missing dates, dates because the playoff games. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs here. And uh, the teams of Madison Square Garden, as long as the current people, uh, who, the current person who owns the team, the teams, uh, you know, sticks his nose into businesses he doesn't know, they're going to stink. So, uh, uh, you know, as I said, uh, because of the people in Pittsburgh, uh, that I've become very good friends with, and I hope to meet some of them uh, at the Sabre Convention, uh, that uh, I'm rooting for them. I, I root for them just as a, you know, just to support them. Well, we, we certainly appreciate that, Al, and I, I, hope, uh, I hope your New York teams at some point Full, uh, come around, but the Knicks are a prime example, as I say to everybody. It's oh, not okay. all that cheap. Okay. They're going to be horrible for, forever. <laughs> Plenty of people spend a lot of money and lose. Yeah. And that's that's a prime example of one that does. Yeah. Okay, hopefully uh, next time we talk, we'll, we'll have something good, something better to talk about if they'll actually win some games. You got it, out. Okay, so we'll try uh, either next week or the week after. we you know, better basically on your convenience, because I know you're still working. I appreciate it. Oh, and we'll talk to you then. been a pleasure. Okay. Take care. You got it. Okay. Uh, This is uh, Alan Blumkin on the uh, Comfortably Zone Radio Network. Uh, We just finished with David Finale, and we'll be back in a week or two with an update on the Pirates' uh, experiences in 2018. Thank you. Sure.